Before we looked at arithmetic sequences, and now I'm going to show you what an arithmetic series is. So first maybe it helps to learn what we mean by series. Well a series, when we say that, is just the sum of the terms in a sequence. This is in any generic case. So a series is just the sum of the terms of a sequence. Now remember what sum means, it means add them up. So an example, if I have like a 1, 3, 5, 7, let's say, well the series would be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. That's how I would do this. That's what a series is. It just says add up all the terms in a sequence. That sequence could be arithmetic, it could be neither, it could be um, geometric, it could be all sorts of things. But in this case, if it's arithmetic series, then I could say that, so if we're talking about an arithmetic series, well then it's the sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence then. I mean, this should be pretty obvious. So what I mean by that is if we have a sequence, in other words, a list of numbers with a common difference, then the arithmetic series is just the sum of all of those terms, however many you're looking at. And we even have a generic equation for it. It goes like this, S with a little subscript N. And there's different versions of it, but I'll give you one of them. Here it says SN equals N over 2 times, and here I'm going to put a square bracket here, 2U1 plus N minus 1 times D. This is just to keep it sort of a little bit more clear. So this is the equation you need in order to deal with this. This is the main thing you need here. This is it. So let's actually define some of these things here. So SN, well that's the sum of the first n terms. So if I want the sum of the first 20 terms, then it's S20. This is just the notation we use. S means sum. Well, n is just that number n here that we're looking for. U1 is still the first term. Because remember, if it's arithmetic, it has a first term and has a common difference. And so this is the first term, and d is still the common difference. That's all there is to it. So let's do an example with this. So here, we want to find the sum of the first 40 terms of this sequence here. So this is just a list of numbers separated by a comma. Well, I mean, uh, since this is the section called arithmetic series, it probably is arithmetic, but let's, let's check. So let's check if it's arithmetic. Is it really? Well, the difference between 3 and 11 is 8. The difference between 11 and 19 is 8. Because really? you can do 11 minus 3 is 8, 19 minus 11 is 8, and 27 minus 19 is also 8. Because there's a common difference, it is arithmetic. Because of that, then, I can write down, well, what's u1? The first term, I'm told that, it's 3. And I'm told that the common difference, well, I'm not told that, but I can see it, the common difference is 8. And because of that, then, I'm in business. I can do this Sn here. So Sn is n over 2 times 2u1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to write it down again. It's always a good idea to show your teacher or whoever it is you're looking at, or just for yourself. I think it's a good idea to write the generic equation all the time. This is just to get practice doing it. So I'm going to say Sn equals n over 2 times 2u1 plus n minus 1 all that times d. Now, I don't want Sn, I don't want the nth term, I want the sum of the first 40 terms. Sorry about that sound there, where I'm recording someone just left a door open in a computer lab, I think, so it beeps at them. But here I want the sum of the first 40 terms, so I want S40. Because of that, then, well, N is 40, see, instead of N I put in 40, so that means instead of N here, I have a 40, 40 divided by 2. All that times 2 times and u1 is 3. So 2 times 3 plus, in this case, 40 minus 1. All that times d, which is 8. And so, I can just keep going then. So 40 divided by 2, well, that's 20. And then I can say, well, 2 times 3 is 6 plus and 40 minus 1, that is 39. And I need to do 39 times 8. 
let's see here, uh, 39 times 8, what will that give me? That should be 312. So 312 plus 6 is going to give me, well, that's 318. So there we go. And then 20 times 318, that will give me, what's that double, it's 636, six, yeah, 6360. 6,360. That is my answer. That's the sum of the first 40 terms. Of course, you're welcome to use a calculator. I hope I did it right. Yeah, I think I did. So 6,360. That's way better than actually sitting there and going 3 plus 11 plus 19 plus 27 plus dot, 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 40 times. That would be really boring. So instead, you can just use this formula here. And now, of course, a more difficult example. So here we're told to find the sum of the following. 4 plus 9 plus 14 plus 19 plus dot 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 plus 104. Now I suppose it helps first of all to check, is it arithmetic? It's a good idea to always check. So the difference between 4 and 9, that's 5. The difference between 9 and 14 is 5. The difference between this is 5. And so, yes, it's arithmetic. I know that u1 is equal to 4. I know that d equals 5. Now, I'm about to do something on purpose here. Now, I'm telling you, uh, this is what I decided to do, I think, with this one, is I'm going to do something wrong on purpose. I'm going to show you the most common type of mistake that a student, I think, would make with this type of question. So if I gave this to my class, for example, I would expect many of them to make this mistake that I'm about to make, okay? So keep in mind, what I'm about to write down here is going to be wrong but I'm going to walk you through it and I'm going to show you how it seems very correct. So I want to find the sum of the following. So I'm going to use this equation. The equation, of course, goes Sn equals n over 2 times, in brackets, uh, 2 times u1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now keep in mind, I haven't made the mistake yet, okay? This is just writing the generic equation. So here, you don't have to check the equation. It is the same as this. Okay, I've done that, hopefully, correctly. Now, I'm going to make a mistake from the next couple of steps here. There's something that's going to be wrong here. I want to see if you can spot it. So I'm going to do it in a different color because I'm going to end up crossing it all off. Okay? So off to the side then, I'm going to show you. Well, if I want this right here, I would say, well, this is S, and let's see, this is 104. So I'd say S104 equals, this would be 104 divided by 2, all that times 2 times U1, which is 4 plus, this would be 104 minus 1, all that times d, which is 5. And then I would just sit there and calculate all this, and I would get an answer that is wrong. Can you find what I did wrong? Because I actually did something here that's wrong. What did I do wrong? Can you find it? I hope so. Um, I don't want the sum of the first 104 terms. My big mistake was right here. This right here was the wrong part. I do not want the sum of the first 104 terms. I don't know how many terms there are. So that is the key thing here, okay? So that's what was wrong about this. Okay, I don't want the sum of the first 104 terms. In fact, I don't know, was the key thing here. I don't know how many terms there are. Okay, I don't know this. So, oops, I gotta make sure my writing is a little bit more clear here. So I don't know how many terms there are. In other words, what is n? What in the world do I do here? Well, I first need to find n. Now, I know that u of n, in other words, I know that my last term my nth term is equal to 104. And this is a big difference. n is not 104. un is 104. In other words, the nth term is 104. But I don't know what n is. So I'm going to then try to figure that out. Well, I know that un, the equation for that goes, if you remember, arithmetic sequence equation. un equals u1 plus n minus 1 times d. That's the generic equation. So I know that the nth term 
is 104. So 104 equals u1, I know that's 4, plus, and I don't know n here, so n minus 1, all that times d, which is 5. And then from there I can say 104 equals 4, and now I'm going to multiply the n minus 1 times the 5. So 5 times n is 5n, and 5 times negative 1 is minus 5. So I can say then that 104 equals, well let's see, I can combine the 4 and the minus 5, that's negative 1. So I'm going to say 5n minus 1. Then I can move my minus 1 over to the left, so I have 105 equals 5n. Okay, that's what I have there. And then what I can do is um, divide. So 105 divided by 5, and that should be, what's that? That's 21. So this right here should work. So that means if I know that n is, whoops, that's not the full answer. That's not what I'm trying to do, but at least n equals 21. I'm not going to put a square bracket around it. I'll put a circle around it just to tell me that that was the sort of middle step I needed first. Because now I can do it. Now I can find S21. I need the sum of the first 21 terms. That was the key here. See, again, I didn't have 104 terms. I don't know how many terms. I go 4 plus 9 plus 14 plus 19 plus whatever plus whatever plus whatever until I reach 104. I had to figure out how many terms there were from here to here. And I did that. I figured out there's 21 terms. So I want the sum of the first 21 terms. And now I can use my handy equation here, that Sn equals n over 2, so in this case, 21 over 2, all that times 2 times u1, which is 4, plus, in this case, 21 minus 1, all that times d, which is 5. Then I can just work this all out, and then I've got my answer. So in this case, then, the sum of the first 21 terms is going to be, well, 21 divided by 2, uh, and actually, maybe what I'm going to do here is just use my calculator for this. I'm just going to leave this, because this is maybe not very nice to look at, this number here. But um, 2 times 4, well, that is 8. Uh, plus, and this here is 20 times 5. And 20 times 5, that's going to be 100, so this is 108. So we can say it's 21 times 108, all that divided by 2. And then what I can do, of course, is maybe I can actually divide these two. So 108 divided by 2, maybe I can do that one first. That'll give me 54, and 54 times 21, that should give me... Wait a second here. I've done that way wrong. Uh, 54 times 21. Oh yeah, that works. That will be uh, 1134. Yeah, that should work. There we go. So the way we do that then is just by being very, very careful and solving first for n. We had to know that there's 21 terms, and then, and only then, can we go ahead and calculate this. Now, of course, you can always do this on your calculator. Right? If you weren't sure, you can always say 21 times 108. You can say enter, and you can divide that answer by 2, and you really do get 1134. So there's lots of ways of doing it. You can do it using mental math if you want, or you can just use a calculator. But the key is knowing how to use the equation and knowing when to use what. So here I tried to give you a sneaky sort of trick question here, right? Because I, I showed you something wrong. I did that on purpose, right? This right here, that was wrong. And that was on purpose just to show you the common mistake is to see that the last term is 104, so then you assume there's 104 terms. But no, the last term was equal to 104, but that was the 21st term. So I hope that helps to show you a little bit how we can deal with series here. So arithmetic series, we use this equation, and we can do easy examples or even more difficult, but it doesn't have to stop us.